Bonjour, everybody. Hi, this is Neshi Lokat. Uh, welcome to Star Nation's um, main fan page here at uh, Facebook. Um, and we're welcome to the morning live stream. Um, every morning I've been doing a live stream um, sharing about the information about the card draw for the day. Um, so welcome, everybody. You know, today's Tuesday, July 10th. And, um, you know, Tuesdays around here, um, home and Star Nation's, uh, is always busy. It's just Tuesday. That's the way Tuesdays have always been. Um, <clears throat> and Tuesday, this Tuesday is no different. Um, we have to add a little bit to it, though, <laughs> because my mother-in-law had a doctor's appointment this morning, and so Paul would would have been home to have um, to let the house cleaners in and, and all that good stuff. So we had to kind of do a little plan plan A, plan B, plan C, just in case, because, you know, you know, when you go to a doctor's appointment, just because they tell you you have a, a nine o'clock appointment doesn't mean you're actually going to see a doctor at nine, right? So uh, we, 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 we planned the contingencies, and Paul walked in the door at 9.35 or something like that. And so uh, we were able to, I was able to come up here to do the broadcast. So that's good stuff. So let's see who's in the chat room, huh? Let's see. Stephanie's here. Good morning, Stephanie. Whoop, got a mosquito with us this morning. Um, Nellie is with us from England. Hey, Nellie. And then Elise is here. Hello, Elise. And hello, Mary Ann. Nice to see you again. And <laughs> Nellie's going, hello again. Hello again. And Mary Mary from Anderson Fry from near, down near Madison, one of my good friends down there. Good morning. Amy Daniels is here too, and she's down near Madison. Um, good to see you guys. And Elisa says, um, Mary isn't here as she, she is being a bit bad. Oh, Okay. Well, yes, I do know that. 67 going on four. Oh, yeah. Yep. Most of you probably don't know this. Some of you do. Um, and and in, uh, in a lifetime in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> once upon a time, um, I was a director of a um, community-based program in Wood County here in Wisconsin, based out of Wisconsin Rapids. And it was a uh, day service for developmentally disabled adults. And um, so what many of our um, clients came right out of, out of high school and they were 21. Um, some people were much older. Uh, some at that time, they were just closing some of the uh, mental health institutions here in Wisconsin. And so we were, we also were receiving some of those people. And uh, so our ages ranged from 21 to 72, I think it was. And my staff, um, they each had up to three people with them, depending on the, the, the people's needs. Um, and basically, you know, it was to, to get them acclimated to their community and, for some people, it was to um, uh, either get them to their 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 uh, supported job um, or to pick them up from their supported job where they'd go swimming. We had one young man who uh, had cerebral palsy. There, you know, everybody in our program was um, severely disabled, and uh, this young man, Doug. Uh, I haven't thought about him in a long time, but he um, he had a motorized wheelchair. Was it motorized? Nope, nope, he wasn't the one with the motorized. But anyway, he just wanted to be what every 22-year-old guy wants to be, you know. And um, so with, with his parents' permission, um, one evening, early evening, early, early evening, um, we took him to a place to play some pool, and he couldn't drink, neither could we, really. Um, but, you know, sodas and, and uh, hanging out and playing music and just doing what 22-year-olds do, just shooting, you know, the breeze with there. And so um, it was, oh, gosh, at that time of my life, I was just out of high school, uh, gra graduated from uh, my undergrad. And uh, is there's nothing like taking um, a piece of paper, um, a plan, right? It was a, uh, a plan. It was a proposal that was accepted by um, – the county to provide the service. And so literally taking it off from a piece of paper and bringing it into the physical world, um, finding the place to hold the, the contents, right? Our office space, um, hiring the staff 
and interviewing parents and the people who were looking to, to be a part of our program. And um, it was run, run through uh, United Cerebral Palsy. And so, um, yeah, that was another lifetime ago. Oh, my goodness. So I, I do know how to transfer people from a wheelchair to a chair or to a bed or vice versa. How to do it so you don't hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. And Elisa is saying she's been brain injured since birth and very mean if she doesn't get her own way. No. Oh. And she's been kicked out of everywhere, including Behavioral Center in Malcolm County. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Elisa, is, is, is Mary verbal or nonverbal? Because sometimes, sometimes that can add to to the situation if they're nonverbal because, you know, everybody wants to be heard. And one of the things that we talked about um, when I was training staff is that, you know, for our, the, the people in our program, um, for most of their life, they, they were told by people, mostly adults, um, what they weren't capable of, what they couldn't do. And we, they had to work with what they couldn't do, you know, and so our premise in our program was coming up from a different perspective is that we were going to find out what they were capable of, what they could do, and to support that and nurture that because they already knew what they couldn't do, <laughs> you know, and it was all over their paperwork, all over their files, what they couldn't do. Um, and so that was the premise. And um, not to say that we didn't have bad days. There are bad moments. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Um you know, people with um, self-abuse and, um, yeah. It, it, <laughs> I remember sitting with one, one young lady. She was um, extremely autistic, and her, her name was Cindy. And um, she loved spending time with me. Why? It's because I talked to her like she was a 30-year-old. You know, and and when she would start her, her self abuse, I would say, just you know, just a minute, just stop. Let's let's see if we can figure out what's going on here, and maybe we can I can help you. I, I can't promise you that I will, but or that I can. But let's try to figure this out, you know. And and um, and so just being observant, and when when she would start to self abuse, and what was going on around it, and and it turned out that she felt like she was being ignored, and um. And there, you know, and she really liked spending one-on-one -on -one time too. So, but it took us a while to get there. Yeah. <laughs> Mary is very verbal. Okay. All right. Um, Stephanie said, sounds similar to what I do with winter camp. I need to pick your brain at some time. Sure. You know, just, just so you know, Stephanie, that was back in the 90s. That's why I said in a, in a planet far, far away. It was like another lifetime ago, but certainly there's some things that still carry forward, you know, um, and sometimes working with uh, parents, sometimes it was it was more um, a challenge in communication when you were talking to the parents because, you know, I'm trying to understand them from their point of view and taking care of um, this disabled child all of their life. And now <clears throat> you actually have somebody who who's willing to sit down to listen to you and, and hear what you have to say. Um, and working with group homes too, same difference. Uh, but that was a long time ago, and I'm glad I did it. It, it is one of the um, one of the things that I was a part of that I am most proud of, and um, cherish the memories of it. Um, I, I also know how it stretched me, um, and the advocacy work, um, and being an empath and trying to adjust my boundaries and <clears throat> when you have staff and, and parents stopping by your house at any time they, they wanted to um you know so we had to had to work on the boundary thing but i learned a lot about myself that's for sure i learned how to be a really good effective advocate where you don't yell and scream at them <laughs> because you want to, you want to some, sometimes when it comes to um, governmental entities and, <clears throat> and that's what they are too, aren't they? Entities, a whole nother story. So I was trying to explain about Tuesday. So it was, it, you know, it's always busy here. 
always, but um, on Tuesdays. Um, but this Tuesday, uh, just a little bit extra into the mix. Um, and so we had these contingencies. I was ready to do my broadcast from down at the house. Um, I was trying to decide, do I do it from my, my office downstairs uh, where I have the lighting set up still? Part of the, the lighting is still set up there. Um, or do I do it out on the Four Seasons? Um, and so I chose the Four Seasons so I wouldn't have to try to reconfigure my, my lighting downstairs. And um, I was just getting things, just going to start getting them out and getting them set up. And Paul walks in and I'm like, yay. And he says, well, you have time to go up to the academy if you want. And I said, sure, I'm gone. And so, um, yeah. But, you know, the, the other busyness, um, good busyness, is we have three shows today, including this live stream. So this morning we watched uh, Mervyn Kelly on his show from Star to Stone. And I love talking about myth and legends. Um, and so if you didn't catch that one, catch the recording because there's some good stuff in there. Um, and the other uh, the other one that's coming up is Polly Joe's show at 11. So I have to make sure that we're done a little bit before 11 um, so that I can um, – get myself prepared because what I do is I monitor the shows and help them get sh things shared out and that sort of thing. So, yep. And my show tonight, I hope you can join me. Um, the show tonight is all about our gifts and using our gifts and identifying our gifts. And it's all about our gifts um, because the topic actually came from one of our live streams um, late last week. So, you know, going bouncing back to Polly Joe, Polly Joe show is about um, totem animals and how and relating them to our chakras. And I am so fascinated by that. That's a perspective of chakras I am not aware of. And so I am I, it's one of those shows I'm going to be riveted and I'm going to have my my notebook out to take some notes. Um, so. Yep. And Elisa's saying, I have tried the, for the, for the last 13 years, but I want, I want, I want her gone. Can't, uh, can't the stupid government reinstate her, her Medicaid? Uh, hard to say, but I don't like her. And this is my worst nightmare. Oh, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, and talking to me, Stephanie or Nasha. Yep. Uh, no, are you talking to me? Stephanie? Oh, um, actually, I, I don't know. I thought Stephanie, yeah, that's a good one. Stephanie, if you can, um, yeah, either one of us, actually. Um, <laughs> she's going, Stephanie is going, apparently both of you. Um, yeah. Well, you know, taking care of uh, someone in your home who is disabled or elderly or both, um, it really, really is, it challenges every aspect of you, every aspect um, and it really um, shows me anyway that I really, I have everything I need in the toolbox. I do. Um, and one of the things that helps me the most is to be grounded, to be grounded and um, to listen to and, and turn to help when I need the help, whether it's my spiritual team or if it's somebody in a human form. And you're right, you know, that the money, the, the financial situation is is the, the kicker, isn't it? Um, and this is something that Nellie and I, uh, Mervyn and I, are doing that uh, series on uh, caring for elderly parents, um, which is, I think, coming up. He and I have to talk about it. It's on the 22nd, I believe. Um, and the reality is, is that... Um, Many, many of us chose this path um, consciously. And um, mine is more connected to my culture um, and my own personal belief system. And others, others have that decision made for them unconsciously or subconsciously. Um, because, you know, there's a part of us that... Um, because they're a part of our family and they're, they're where else are they going to go, you know, kind of thing. And I know that personally, I wouldn't, I, I couldn't <laughs> I close my eyes. I could not leave my mom in a nursing home that she can afford. Yeah. Bad. 
<laughs> I've been to some of them, the cl visiting clients or, you know, uh, family members and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, not, not someplace I want my mom. So I suck it up. Usually most days it's good. Most, most days it's good. It's those, those times when it's not. Um, and she and I, you know, talk about communication. When we don't communicate very well is when we have problems. Um, and we have to sit down. And I'm the one that has to have the hard conversations with her. My brothers don't do that. No. <laughs> but you know what? This is kind of about um, what the card was drawn today. Um, and we've had this before. I've got to try to keep my book open. Um, we've had this card before. The field of plenty. Ideas, needs, manifested. Right? Ideas and needs manifested. And um, Jamie Sams, the way, the, what she writes about this is that um, spirit, when we make our needs known, that there is a energy field, these are my words, energy field um, available to us where our thoughts, our, our desires, our needs when we say we're going to send it out into the universe, the Seneca believe that it's to the field of plenty. It's where um, things get created. And it's a part of that manifestation, right, to manifest. And um, spirit, creator, um, energy is energy, right? We're the ones, humans, who put... Um, the positive and negative on it. And so when we when we manifest, you know, to 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 bring in what we need and what we want and um we have to be really clear in in our desire. That's what I've learned, right? And so one of the things that happened um back in 2017 when I was having my own dark night of the soul. I can smile about it now, but let me tell you, I wasn't then. Um, um, one of my good sisters, Minnie, Minnie and I were talking one day, and, and those are the the people. And my my good friend from my BFF from from my childhood, Marley. Um, th those are the ladies that I turned to, and um, Minnie. Minnie is the one who reminded me. And that's what good friends are for, is one of the things is to help us to remember that we have the tools, that we know how to do this. And she says, Let, why don't we turn our attention our, to creating, manifesting um, the best possible place and help for your mom, you know, in the event that she needs um, more medical help. Um, where, where is the best placement and, um, and having all of the financial, um, available for that, you know, and, and it reminded me, it reminded me and how, to, what, what do I want to manifest? Do I want to manifest something that is going to be supportive or manifest something supportive in a positive way that will bring me more, uh, qualified and really good help? Um, or do I want to manifest something that is going to support and keep the, the, the negative thoughts rolling, you know, and bringing in the people who come in and you're saying, oh no, <laughs> I, when we interviewed you, it was, everything was good. What happened? Um, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, so she reminded me of that, that where we do the, the manifesting to bring things in is in the field of plenty. And that the 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 idea of scarcity really is a two legged a human uh, concept. Um, spirit with through spirit there is no scarcity. None. We're the ones who who create that. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, and Elisa's saying I had my mom for seven years. Um, yeah, she's saying, sorry to distract you, just a super tough day. Yeah, I know, I know, I understand. I can empathize with you because I've been there, you know. Um, yeah. Sometime, I think we should probably do a, do maybe a, a separate roundtable about this one. What do you think? 
you know, um, it, it's, it, it, it becomes a little bit more tolerable when you know that you're not in it alone, that you're not the only one going through something alone. Um, that's what support groups are supposed to be for, right? But usually the support groups that are available locally, at least in a small town, you know, they don't include the spiritual aspect of it like this. No. Nope. Um, let, let me let me see. There was something that Jamie Sam's had said in here when I reread the information um, that kind of jumped out at me. She says that um, to call the ideas into manifestation, we only um, we we one need only come to great mystery with a grateful heart, which will bring the needed ideas into the physical reality. And so that's something that I know for certain, for sure, is that it's our emotions that is the fuel to bring um, that manifestation catapulted into the physical world, right? And then it's our job to ground it to the earth plane. And these days I'm reminding everybody <laughs> to ground it to the fourth dimension earth plane not the third, because the third is, um, you know, it's still a low, vi dense vibration, the third dimension. And, and you know that. We know we know people who aren't quite awake yet. And so you can sense that, um, that density. The fourth um, has the capability of, of um, that vibration of acceptance and love, because that will move us into the fifth dimension, right? So no matter what your emotion is, whether it's a positive emotion as we deem it or a negative emotion as we deem it, as long as it's it's intense and, and, and it's felt and it's felt in your heart, that's what's going to bring that, that manifestation in. And um, many times when... <laughs> Because the emotion, whatever emotion you're using to manifest it, that's what you're going to get. And that's what they mean about, you know, um, uh, if you're, if you're uh, focusing on uh, the lower vibration or the negative vibration of it, and it seems to multiply and come in more, you think, what the heck? <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get this change and I'm bringing in more. Well, then we have to turn around and, and, and really examine our own thoughts and our own emotions about it, because that's what we're manifesting. That's what we're drawing to us. Um, and uh, and the reason why I can even say that with any certainty is because of 2017. That was the year, um, yeah, a lot of things became crystal clear to me that, that I was bringing in some stuff because I couldn't get off the the dime about some of the things that were happening that were not positive. And, uh, and so with, with my good sisters, friends and my BFF, they helped me and Paul got to put Paul in there too. They're the ones who helped me to, to remember my tools and how to change my thoughts. And yeah. Yep. Turning to my team, <laughs> my spiritual team who got yelled at, by the way, quite often in 2017. Yes. Um, I'm so glad they love me, though, because they stuck with me, right? <laughs> Amy is saying, at least I completely understand my mom and, and live together. That in itself is not easy and kept my dad at home until he passed. Then my mom's uh, for two years. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it something that, uh, that we have this co another commonality in our community, right? another 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 experience that that can bring us together all right so Jamie says that um, in the Seneca tradition the field of plenty is seen as a spiral that it has its smallest revolution out in space and its largest revolution near the earth so think about that and and you know the pictures that we see about our galaxy um, and that how the it spins out, you can see the arms of the, the galaxy, how, how tight it is and small at the center and how it gets bigger as it moves out, right? That's the expansion piece. 
Um, and what the Seneca did was they took that imagery and they manifested it into the physical form by creating a basket called the cornucopia. That is to be the representation or the symbol of the field of plenty. That um, in the field of plenty that everyone is taken care of. And, you know, and I know that um, in many ways we all experience um, times in our life where it feels like, um, you know, that where does the support go um, to, to your life? really, and what's going on in your life. Um, I have had friends where, um, do you remember the crash in 2008 where when people were losing their homes and uh, people lost their retirement funds and uh, people lost their jobs and it was, it was tough, you know? Um, hi, Deanna. Good to see you in the chat room. So glad you're here. Um, that we wonder what happened to the support. Where did ever where did that all go? Um, and sometimes when we're going through those those times, is when it's the hardest to remember that that spirit is always taking care of us. The universe is always taking care of us. I, it has never not taken care of us. Okay. Um, and I know it's hard to to remember that in those times, in those time frames. Um, and yet, all those lessons and all those experiences that we gained out of that time frame, you know, are immeasurable because they it's like tempered steel. It's you know um, we went through some things that really tested our resolve. And we made it out to the other side, uh, maybe kind of kind of bedraggled, <laughs> and you know, uh, uh, fringed edges along the way. But we made it, and um, yeah, and, and it tempered us. It tempered us. It tempered us to that that steel that is unbreakable. And what's not what's unbreakable is usually our faith in the universe, in the creator, whatever, whatever you call that divine being is unshakable. That's was the hugest gift that came out of that time frame. And so, you know, the scarcity um, definition, individuals definition uh, certainly shifted and changed in that time frame too. Yeah. Stephanie is saying, I've been working on the business plan for winter camp. It's supposed to be an, an intentional community for parents of adults with special needs who need support as they get ready to pass and ensure that their adult kids have a safe place to be Uh huh. when they're gone. My mom has two living special needs adult children, and she, and she ages. I keep seeing her her need more help. I have a special needs kiddo, and I want to get older. I have a little chance of anyone being able to take care of me. So this is a very personal project to me. I see the need. Oh, absolutely. All right. This is perfect, Stephanie, for sharing that. Thank you so much. Because let me tell you, this is about this field of plenty card today is all about um bringing uh sending out our prayers our, our intentions what we want to do using so that we can use our gifts so that um what we're manifesting and we ground it to the earth plane is it's coming through us through our body right because our body is here on the earth plane and so we're we're in a position to be able to use the gifts that we came in with that we came in with um, and to provide a service to our community. And that's exactly what you're trying to do. It's exactly what you're doing, exactly what you're doing. And I know exactly what you mean about um, elderly parents. A lot of the parents in that community, community based facility I, I, I ran, um, many of the parents were either entering into retirement age or they were past retirement age. And helping um, those older parents identify um, their own 
care, uh, whether it's coming from uh, a nursing home or a retirement village or something like that, and where to place their child and adult child. And so, and much of that had to do working with the emotions because they've been taking care of this person their entire, entire life. And so who, the feeling that nobody can do it better than me, even though you want to let go, there's a part of them that, that doesn't want to let go um, and helping them work through that. Um, so, but you know, the use of your gifts, using them to create something is, you know, when they see dreams come true, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Deanna says, it's my joy and honor to be with you all. All of you, I breathe in and exhale to ground. Thank you so much, Deanna. Absolute. Thank you so much. That's that's a gift in itself. Uh, Amy is saying, wow, Stephanie, this is so needed. Yes, it is. It's very much needed. Um, so... Jamie is saying that uh, she wrote that every need in our world can be met when we act upon any good idea that comes to our minds. Right, Stephanie? Any good idea that comes to our minds. Um, that, that Those ideas, those nudges that are, are part of our spiritual team who is saying, look over here, look over there. Um, do, do you see that? That's what, what it's about when we witness something. You know, at the end of every broad, broadcast, I say, um, you know, that uh, to be aware, to notice. Notice how the energy is flowing to you, around you, through you, and how it, how the essence of the cards that we get, how does that unfold for you? And to notice whether or not you are a witness of the unfoldment or are you a direct participant? Because either way, it, it's important. It's important. Because if you're witnessing it, then maybe it is your spiritual team that is saying, did you see that? Notice that. Take note of that because you're going to need that information. It's a nudge. It's kind of like a muse in a way, you know, um, to see something that is like, because you're not really, it doesn't affect you directly, but you're, you're in the vicinity to, to see it, to feel it, to sense it. Um, and so that a lot of times that spirit's way of showing us our next step or the, the path that we're on, there's some validation to it. Okay. Um, so I'm very excited for you, Stephanie. Um, it's the, and if you can keep in mind and in heart is to be grateful and to say it out loud, to say it with some gusto. Um, the feelings, the emotions around it. Um, and because those emotions are what's going to help you to, to bring it into the earth plane. And then the plan that you're working on is how it gets grounded here. Grounded. Yeah, I'm excited about it because it is an unfilled need. Uh, Jamie Sams also goes on to say that the keys to manifesting what is needed are gratitude, and trust balanced with action balanced with action she says that um, uh, there is no need for scarcity in the fifth world abundance for all the children of earth is manifesting thought always precedes form thought always precedes form if ideas of sharing and equality precede that reality in the hearts of two leggeds the manifestation of physical needs being met will follow. The great, this is great mystery's promise to, to the, uh, in creating in the field of plenty. In the field of plenty, yeah. So, well, Jocelyn's here. Good morning, Jocelyn. Uh, Elisa's saying, I'm sorry, but I need to go right now. My experiences was way different. Can't. Okay. Uh, okay, that's okay, Elise. We'll see you tomorrow, okay? Big hugs to you, too. All right? All right. And Maggie's here, too. Hi, Maggie. Um, so for those who just joined, this is the card that we got this morning. It's about the field of plenty, about ideas and needs manifested. And so we're talking about how um, 
scarcity is really um, a human, a two-legged um, thought, belief, uh, whereas spirit, uh, the field of plenty is, that's exactly why they call it that, is, and it's through the Seneca tradition, um, that there there is no scarcity, um, that we have the ability and the opportunity to to manifest what's needed. It it's in, in how we manifest and um, how we fine tune that tool that we have. Right. So in in that card application, um, Jamie said, says that um, you are being assured that what you need at this time is manifesting, your needs will be met. Uh, give thanks now before your needs are met. To give thanks before the need is met. Um, and show great mystery the trust you have in your process. Dropping doubt. And remember the other day when we were talking about uh, innocence, that childlike, that our childlike innocence is still here with us, even though it may be covered up with um, debris and, you know, that emotional, physical trauma, that interference, um, and that when we're healing, um, those aspects of ourselves that we can uncover that innocence again. And what she's saying, Jamie is saying about this field of plenty is, um, is that when we drop our doubt and we trust is that we um, become childlike again. And so, there's that innocence of thing again, you know. Um, it has a purity of that innocence to it, and we still, we all still have it. Might not feel like it. <laughs> Sometimes it might not even look like it, but it is there. It is there. Good morning, Maggie. She's saying good morning, Nashi, and all. Um, so do not limit the manner in which the physical manifestation occurs. Uh, we're asked to recall the differences between true needs and material crutches. In all instances, the field of plenty reminds us of our divine right to have our prayers answered and our needs met. It's a divine right. So, the field of plenty. Here's the poem, because I want to get to the animal cards. Wait till you hear the animal cards. It's pretty good. All right, so the field of plenty. Field of plenty, abundance for all. No hunger, no more pain. Great mystery holds earth's children dear and feeds them with eternal flame. Children of earth, trust again. Be grateful and give praise. The field of plenty will remain to sustain us all our days. So the field of plenty is there for everybody, everyone. Um, and before learning about the phrase field of plenty, um, how I learned through sacred geometry is that um, the building blocks of all life, the platonic solids. And the platonic solids are found in the sixth, sixth dimension. And um, when we say that we're going to send it out to the universe, that's where you're sending it, out to the sixth dimension. Or in another way of looking at it or calling it, it's the field of plenty. That's where we're sending it. So the mental mind gets this image, gets this concept. And um, whether you call it the, the field of plenty or if you call it the sixth dimension, um, it's the same place. And it's where um, the creator has the um, energy placement to create what's needed there. And it, those, those creations come from our thoughts first. Thoughts, emotions, manifestation, grounding. For those people who like to think about it in steps. <laughs> now, you're going to wonder, when I asked for the, the animal card, right, and how I ask for this card is what what animal relative um, would be would be able to help us to understand the essence of the card in this case the field of plenty um, and with more clarity and with more depth 
And so this is this is what my my spiritual team brought to us is the antelope. And it's like the antelope. <laughs> um, okay. I honestly have never given much thought to the medicine of the antelope. Has anybody else? I I haven't. I, I had to stop and, and um, think about what do I know about the antelope? It's not much. Other than Paul has been out to hunt antelope. And um, it's not one of my favorite meats. Um, it's because they eat a lot of sage. Okay. And so it's the, the meat is kind is really kind of, um, it's different. It's different than whitetail. Let's put it that way. And, um, and so what that's very little that I know about the antelope. I know that they live out West and I know that they can jump and run quite far. That's how much I know about the antelope. <laughs> Stephanie is saying they're all over the place, um, about 100 miles east of here. Okay, so they're in abundance is what you're saying. Okay, keep that in mind. Hang on to that thought for a second. Because antelope, here's what Jamie Sams has shared with us about antelope. She says, great mystery sent, um, sent the antelope to teach us a lesson. The lesson is to do. Now, how often has anybody talked to us about doing right in a long time because we have been sharing about and trying to change our lifestyles to being rather than doing right being rather than doing but the antelope is about action and doing it says that antelope knew that mankind would survive the ice age if the people learned to eat meat. And so they they basically told the two leggeds is that you need me to keep warm with my fur. You need me and my body to survive. Because what their their diet, the two leggeds diet changed with the ice age. There wasn't that much of berries and fruits to be had. And so in order to, to physically survive, they had to change their diet. And the antelope um, came to them and said, this is, this, is, this is for you, right? And so they were taught, the two-leggeds were taught never to waste or to take more than they needed. When they were in need, the two-leggeds knew they had to take action. So they only hunted when they needed it. The antelope signifies knowledgeable, knowledgeable action. Looking at antelope, you become aware of your mortality and the short time span you have on this planet. The antelope medicine is the knowledge of the life cycles. Knowing of death, antelope can truly live. Action is the key and the essence of living. Action is the key and the essence of living. knowledgeable action so she goes on to say that the antelope me medicine gives you strength of mind and heart and the ability to take quick quick and decisive action to get things accomplished so some of that when i read that i thought okay so if we're using our clairs how we bring information in and we're, we're trying to make a decision about something um Many of us have that clear knowing. You know, we know when we ha when we know something, we know it. We know it, and so it's trusting our our intuition and taking action, um, making those decisions based on that. And so the antelope is really about acknowledging our intuition. Um, and yeah, you can you can do the balance balance between your intuition, what your intuition is telling you, and then also what kind of information you might find out there, like factual information based on science or law or whatever. Um, but the most important thing I think is to trust your intuition. 
the other stuff is there to, to help support it um, rather than making you doubt it. Does that make sense? That's what came to me anyway when I was reading it, is that that knowledgeable action is really about trusting our intuition supported with um, either medicine facts, you know, law facts or something like that. Um, she goes on to say that listen, and even more importantly, act. Combine this with action and you'll overcome any obstacle or hindrance in your path. Always listen to the antelope has to say to you. Um, if they're in the cards, it indicates a message of a higher purpose. Antelope arms you with the bow of authority, B-O-W, of authority. And forces you to act on behalf of self, family, clan, nation, and finally, Mother Earth. The antelope says, do it now. Don't wait any longer. Take courage and leap. Your sense of timing is perfect. Because the time is now and the power is you. Okay, so... What does that tell us about the field of plenty and manifesting when you combine the two, right? Is for me, it sounded like, felt like that when we have those ideas, when, we, when we're seeing the synchronicity, um, when we're witnessing something and the, the thought comes to us is is to how do I manifest this? How do I bring this to the earth plane? And is to act on it. Um, I think it's the balance between being and doing. Because in the balance, it's the same way of saying that balancing the head and heart. Allowing your soul to lead and the mind to be its servant, to do the, to do the action piece, right? That's what I got out of that. I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, I think that we, instead of talking about it or ruminating about it or wishing, wishing, wishing on it, but you don't take any action, um, it doesn't bring it to the earth plane. It doesn't ground it to the earth plane. It doesn't ground through you. You're not, you're, you're not using your gifts um, that you came in with to ground it to the earth plane. Yeah, that's what I got out about that. Interesting stuff. This is the second card that came. Moose. We've had moose before. And moose is about joyfulness, a sense of accomplishment. It's about... Um, Understanding the balance between giving orders to get things done and having the willingness to do them yourself. You know, spirit, you know, when you get these cards and you're looking at them, you're thinking, how do they go together? <laughs> and then you start reading and understanding that the moose is really is supporting what the antelope is saying. Is, is And also to be joyful about it. It says um, about writing down, writing down um, what you, let's see, see if I can read this right, bifocals, <laughs> write down things that you can love about yourself and your progress in life. And that moose when, can help you to identify those. And um, some of that has to do with your gifts. When you write those kind of lists, Look at look at um, where your lit gifts lie within that. If you if you haven't identified what your gifts are, that's one thing you can do. That, yeah. And Nellie is saying connection to both. Exactly, exactly. Um, I I knew more about moose than I did about antelope. Okay, I didn't know antelope was about doing. Um, and so even with moose, you know, moose have a very distinctive mating call very distinctive and um and in that is also about creation because they're they're looking for a way 
a partner to give something birth, a, you know, uh, um, a moose baby. <laughs> what are they called? A calf. Um, so even with their call and with the moose medicine, they, we take that into consideration as well, is that when we're grounding something to the earth plane, um, and we're joyful about it, there's the emotion, right? We're using that moose call to let everybody know that, hey, look, look what's going on. Look what's happening. It's all good. You know, you can you can easily, um, got a mosquito. Um, you can easily um, share what you're doing, just like Stephanie did this morning letting us know that this is something that she's planning, that's something that she's working on, something she's trying to bring into the earth plane that's going to provide a service for a huge population of people. I mean, it could be a template that's going to be used over and over and over again from one community to another. You know, that's that's some good stuff. And, you know, and the fact that uh, Stephanie says that their antelope are all over the place, 100 miles east of where she's living, um, that's an abundance in the East where there's new beginnings, illumination. You know, one of the, I, and then we're going to have to wrap this up. One of the things that I remember my Misho saying to me years and years and years ago, I think I was maybe 14 or 15. Um, he says, you, you want to know the changes that are coming up? the changes in, on earth, you know, the things that are happening, watch the animals, watch the animals. They'll tell you in their behavior and, in, and, in, um, and literally they will tell you. <laughs> so uh, the antelope this morning, antelope medicine, it's good stuff. You know what? I'm so glad you guys came to be with me this morning. I appreciate it. And to have this kind of discussion and, and the input from all of you, um, having a conversation, a spiritual conversation. It's good stuff. Now, um, please, you know, think about joining um, Polly Jo in about 10 minutes uh, for her show, Chakra Sessions. And you can find that on the fan page, Chakra Sessions with her. Um, and I'll be sharing it out to, to everywhere else. Um, and this afternoon, this afternoon, the other thing that is really good this today on this Tuesday is we're publishing the Star Nations Magazine July issue. Yay! That's what I'm going to be doing after lunch. Um, it takes me takes me two seconds to push the button to publish, and it takes me another hour or so, hour and a half, to post it in all the places that we post and um, and that sort of thing. So watch for that. Watch for that to come out this afternoon. And remember, just take whatever resonates with you from the information this morning, um, whatever felt good to you. And if it didn't, that's okay too. Just let it go. Was it meant for you? You know, and we're saying maybe we're planting seeds. Yeah. Um, and then watch how it unfolds for you today and how it comes to you, whether you're a witness or whether you are a direct participant. Because um, the energy information was meant for all of us today. Um, and with that, I thank you for being here. And we'll see you tomorrow uh, for tomorrow's card draw. So, Bama Mina, until we see each other again. See you later.